All right, so the title of this video is Stop Making Excuses. Um, I did a video on how I learned electronics, and it's my most viewed video ever. So I know there's a bunch of people out there who want to learn electronics. And while most comments are supportive, there's a few comments that kind of miss the boat. Uh, one comment is, I don't understand what you're talking about. And they, they didn't understand that I was trying to teach a method and that the circuits I was showing as a demonstration aren't the very, very first ones you work on. You go to page one, you get yourself one of those books I talk about and go to page one, start on page one. Don't expect to know a bunch of stuff, okay? And that's with everything I do. This might be over your head, um, it might be under you, but start where you wanna start. But if, you're, if you see something that looks too complicated, don't make the excuse that I can't understand that. I hate that, that really bugs me. You just need to start at a lower level. Start where you need to start. People who make these comments sometimes speak three languages. I only speak one language. How did they learn how to speak three languages, right? They're super smart, right? And how did they learn how to speak three languages? Did they just jump in and start using complete sentences? No, they started at the very, very basics, right? And so electronics is no different. You gotta start, start with the basics, right? Okay, so one of the complaints I always hear is I do videos and then they say, well, I can't afford that. I live in a third world country and I can't afford an oscilloscope. I can't afford any of this stuff. How could I ever learn any of this stuff, right? Don't make excuses. You can learn with very, very simple tools. I did. Don't think that I had a $1,000 oscilloscope when I started learning electronics. I didn't. I had no oscilloscope. I couldn't afford an oscilloscope, right? I had a voltmeter and that was it. That's the only thing that I had. And I didn't have access to anything. I had to pull spare parts out of old radios and stuff, go into the trash can to find my components and stuff, right? Don't make excuses. If you wanna learn something, do with what you got. If you don't have something, try to figure out a workaround. Try to figure out how to build something if you can't buy something. You can always learn. There's always ways to learn without having to spend any money, okay? So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about a circuit. First, I'll show you what I'm gonna be talking about on the oscilloscope, and then I'm gonna turn off the oscilloscope and we won't use it, okay? So I'm gonna be using a sine wave and a circuit and I'm going to be adjusting the frequency of the sine wave. Now, per everybody's going to immediately say, well, I, I can't have a generator. That costs too much money, right? Stop making excuses. You can get a 555 timer, put a, a resistor on it, and you can do what I'm doing, okay? Stop making excuses. All right, so we're going to see the circuit, and we're going to see that the uh, waveforms get small, and as I turn the knob, they get big, and then I keep turning the knob and they get small again. What does that mean? It means that at low frequencies, it's small, and at high frequencies, it's small. And in between, it goes through a peak. This is what's known as a bandpass filter, okay? It attenuates low frequency and it attenuates high frequency, and it allows some middle frequencies to go through. So we're gonna be looking at a bandpass filter today without an oscilloscope. Okay. We're going to be using a voltmeter. Now, I don't care what voltmeter you have, okay? It can be a super cheap one, it can be an expensive one, I don't care what it is, it's just going to be a voltmeter. And you don't need to spend much money on a voltmeter. In fact, here in the United States, there's a place called Harbor Freight, sometimes they give them away for free. Um, but certainly, you can spend $5 and get something that'll be just fine, right? Um, I'm going to be using this big one, not because I need the accuracy or anything like that. It's just that it photographs well. That's the only reason, okay? I've got a little one. Let's see, let me... Here's one that I maybe I paid $30 for. That's a really, really nice one. But it's only $30. Uh, I think I paid about 20 bucks for this one. And I certainly bought a bunch for $10. So, I will have to say... If you can't afford a $10 voltmeter, you might be looking at the wrong hobby, okay? <laughs> so you need at least some equipment. It's a little bit of money, but sometimes you can find them used. Sometimes you can get somebody to donate you one. You know, they get a good one, you get their old one. Um, I, I give a bunch of my stuff, my old stuff to a friend of mine, and he's very happy to get it. 
So we're going to put this voltmeter um, on on this uh, on this circuit. This is going to be the same way I hooked up the oscilloscope. I'm going to hook up ground to ground, and I'm going to hook up uh, I'm going to hook up this directly directly to the oscillator. Okay, and I can adjust the oscillator so that I get some amount of voltage. So let me. Everybody likes five volts. So let's set it here at, at, at five volts. Well, let's do four volts. It's easier to do the math with uh, easier to do the math with four volts. Okay. I seriously believe that using an analog meter will teach you more about electronics ever than using a digital meter. But that's that's going to be a different subject. Um, but here's four. Okay. So it's we're reading the bottom scale: two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and we're at the four mark there. So we're at four. Okay. And um, I'm going to set the uh, measurement point to the center of this uh, band pass. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. I'm just going to give you the basics here first. We're going to set it in the middle, and we're going to get some amount of voltage. Okay. Now I'm going to turn that knob. Remember, I turned that knob before, and we watched it on the oscilloscope. Knob's back there. We watched it on the oscilloscope, and what happens is at low frequencies it goes down, and then it goes up, and then at high frequencies it goes down. Okay. And so we can use this directly. We can say, okay, well, right here, we'll go with low frequencies first. We'll do the low frequency. We'll go right there to two volts, and that is half of the voltage. We go from four volts to two volts, okay? And that's happening at about um, 10 kilohertz. And then I'm going to go up, and then I'm just going to come back down again right here at two. And that's happening at 37, 37 kilohertz. So it's doing its band pass in the middle some there. And the nice thing about an analog meter is that you can kind of peek it. You can watch it. You can say, oh yeah, I'm going to adjust it here just for the peak. And I'm going to watch, and I'm going to watch, and I'm going to watch. It's peaking right there. And where is that happening? At 17 kilohertz. So this is a 17 kilohertz band pass filter with a bandwidth, the half power bandwidth, from 10 kilohertz to 37 kilohertz. And I'm doing that all with a voltmeter. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about filters and how we can use this nice instrument to learn all about filters. Okay, so let's do that next. So the first concept we need to learn is a resistive divider. We have one resistor and two, two resistors. Okay, here are my resistors. And I'm going to hook them up like this. And um, if these are the same value, these are 1K resistors, so I have 1K and 1K. If I have them in series like this, this will be a voltage divider. So if we put in 5 volts here, we'll get 2.5 volts here. If we put in 4 volts here, we'll get 2 volts here, right? And we'll use the meter leads to actually hold everything together. I won't have to solder it together. All right. All right. Uh, so there we go. All right. So. Uh, what are we measuring? We're measuring two volts. Now I'm going to turn the knob over here, and I turn the knob and nothing happens, okay? Nothing happens. I can change the frequency and nothing happens. What does that tell us? What did we learn? Okay, we're learning here, remember? We don't know anything about electronics, we're learning. It means that this is frequency independent. All frequencies are attenuated the same. High frequencies, low frequencies, this attenuates by a factor of two all the time, all frequencies. All right. So let's do another one here. All right. Uh, let's do this one, where we have a 1K resistor and a inductor. This one has to be around 9.6 mega, mega uh, millihenries, 1.6 millihenries. So we have a 1K resistor and then an inductor. Okay. It looks like our other thing. We have a resistor, resistor. This time we have a resistor inductor. But I want you to think about this in terms of resistance. So when uh, we hook this up here, it's like a divider, but it has a funny resistor. It's called an inductor. All right. And so let's go ahead and do that. I need to change my circuit here. All right, so we're gonna have a, a resistor, oops, a resistor and an inductor, and that's all that's gonna be in the circuit, all right? So let's hook that up, and we will put our voltmeter on that, all right? All right, so now we have our voltmeter. And we have our signal over there, okay? 
and I am going to turn the knob and we can see the voltage go up. And I can continue to turn the knob, okay, and I can go higher and higher and higher, but it never gets any bigger. But I can go this direction and I can keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. Oh, starting to come down, starting to come down, starting to come down, okay. It's about a half value there at about 10 kilohertz. All right, so what, what did we just learn? Yeah. What did we just learn? We learned that at 10 kilohertz, this inductor is pretending to be a 1K resistor. It's acting the same as a 1K resistor because we have a 1K, 1K, we have half of the voltage. So we, we know that at 10 kilohertz, this inductor is acting. It's um, resistance, it's reactance, um, there's a bunch of terms you'll learn, but basically its attenuation is the same as a 1K resistor. It's acting like a 1K resistor, okay? Now we're going to do it for the, uh, for the capacitor one. We're going to put a capacitor. We have a resistor and then a capacitor. So let's, let's hook that one up. And now I'm going to turn the knob. And, oh, it's gone down. It's gone down. I'm going to go the other way. And there we go, we're at maximum now, okay? I'm gonna turn them up higher and higher frequencies and look, it's going down. Going down, going down, going down. It's going down about there, right around 30 kilohertz, okay? So what did we just learn? We learned that this particular situation, this 1K resistor and this 0.01 microfarad capacitor, this capacitor pretends to be a 1K resistor at 30 kilohertz, all right? Now let's hook up this thing where we have uh, these two things in parallel, okay? So let's hook that up. All right, so I'm gonna go down in frequency and it goes down. And then I'm gonna go up in frequency, it goes up and then it starts to go down again. So remember that's how we started out. We started out with a bandpass filter. So we've gone back to the original circuit, okay? But what did we just learn? We already did that experiment once, but we really didn't understand what we were doing. Now what we do is we know that we had one of those and we had one of those. Well, what is this? Okay. Well, this was letting through high frequencies, but blocking low frequencies. This was letting through low frequencies, but blocking high frequencies. And we put two together, low and a high, you get a bandpass filter. You'll get attenuation below a certain amount, and you get attenuation above a certain amount, but there'll be a peak when you have this type of circuit, right? And what did we use? We used some parts that we stole out of a radio. We used a voltmeter that's super cheap. Yeah, I used a fancy uh, thing here just because it's on my bench, but I kind of just used a 555. Then do I know exactly what the frequency is? No, I don't. I would need to have a 555 that I had calibrated. Um, so then you say, okay, now you're going to give up again. Now you're going to make an excuse why you can't do this experiment, okay? Um, you could certainly hook up a 555, use some values you know, and then you know what those frequencies are, okay? You can do the calculation, you can learn the math, and you can learn the equation for the frequency output of a 555 timer given the, in, the uh, resistance you know and the capacitance you know. And how do you, res how do you know those two things? Well, the capacitor has it written on it, so you know that one. The resistor has it written on it, so you know that. You can have a variable resistor, and then you can use your meter that you just have, and you can use that meter to measure the resistance. And so there's always ways to get by what you don't have, all right? When you start out in electronics, when I started out in electronics, I didn't have anything. I had to make everything. One of the very best ways of learning electronics is building the tools that you'll need to do your work. So if you don't have a frequency generator, try to build one. If you don't have a frequency counter, try to build one. Um, maybe the oscilloscope's a little bit hard to try to build one. But you know, these days, I've seen oscilloscopes for sale, brand new, for $27. $27. Um, you don't need a super fast one. You don't need a brand name one. You just need one because sometimes it's nice to be able to look at the waveform. But I showed you the day we didn't need to look at the waveform. We could imagine the waveform, okay? We could imagine it. We know that it's an AC waveform. We know that it's going up and down, but it didn't stop us from learning this. It didn't stop us from learning, oh, that's why it works. It's because this has the same 
resistance as that. Oh, this has the same resistance as that. And then if you went up higher and higher in frequency, it would attenuate more and more and more. And over here, you go low in frequency, it would conduct more and more and more down this direction. And so you learned about these two types of filters, a low pass and a high pass. And you put them together and you made a band pass. Well, how much money did you spend? You spent nothing. You spent nothing. Um, and you did it all with a, with, with a simple voltmeter. So anyway, I know I said it too many times, but stop making excuses.